Very good afternoon to all of you. Yeah, and it's always a pleasure to come back to Lucknow. I think I was hearing my friends Trivuan and Abhishek talking. So it's always a pleasure. So uh, yeah. So uh, is my slide slides visible? Yes, yes, yes. Please, please go ahead. So, uh, We'll start with the uh, with the uh, EEG waveforms. I think uh, the most important uh, or the most uh, curious or the most interesting part whenever we come across uh, the EEGs in our ward rounds. I mean, uh, 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 all our residents, the PGs, everyone asks for. Is there something that is showing? Waveforms are showing. Where are the abnormalities? Our plan, our plan, our mind always goes to abnormalities. Where are the things that are abnormal? Where are the spikes that are showing? But but before we start picking up the abnormalities, before we start picking up the uh, uh, abnormal waves. It's very very wise to know okay, what is normal in an EEG graph. I mean, uh, for, as for any other modality, because once you once you know the normal, it becomes easier to pick up what is something which is different from the normal and which is uh, maybe an abnormal thing. So very rightly said, EEG uh, is a kind of like a, a personal handwriting. You need to see it a number of times so that you can start deciphering it. In a way, and sometimes you'll find that even the EEG machines at different places may have some amount of artifacts, like our institution or some of the institutions. You start finding some amount of different different artifacts as per the EEG's pattern. You understand that from my instrument, this thing comes, which most look, looks most likely a kind of like artifact on the part. So we saw uh, yesterday uh, uh, by uh, by Dr. Goswami how the EEG waveforms are uh, generated. From the brain uh, uh, part, what we'll be seeing today onwards that uh, what do we look in the EEG waveforms? So uh, this is the first thing. So when you see an EEG graph, like this is an EEG graph, of almost around eight nine year old child. So what you see, uh, 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 these two yellow lines are one second. So this is one second. This is one second. This is one second. This is one second. So when you talk about the waveforms. you talk about the waveforms in their frequency how frequent the waveforms are coming in terms of their morphology and in terms of their spread and the nature also so frequency is how many waves are occurring per second so if you count this is the one second part in this eeg which is a bipolar montage and we are looking at frontal to occipital location so if you count in this location at the occipital part the waveforms will be something around 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 so almost 10 10 waveforms so this is like a 10 per second uh, 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 waveform so which falls into the alpha category of the waveform and this is one complete wave the one up stroke down stroke is one complete wave so you have got 10 uh, per second which falls into the alpha part if you count anteriorly in the i mean the frontal location you can't count because there are so many waveforms small small tiny waveforms so definitely they will be falling into the uh, beta category on the part the similarly in this location so this is about the first thing which you look in the eeg waveforms that how many waves are occurring per second to call in terms of the frequency on the part because based on the frequency you divide the eeg waves either they are in the alpha range when they are in the range of 8 to 13 hertz just now we saw or they are in the beta range we saw in the frontal eye fields when they are more than 13 hertz or they are slower waves like theta wave which is 4 to 7 hertz and delta which is less than 4 hertz so less than 4 waves per second will be the Uh, delta waves so these are the four basics uh, of uh, uh, waveforms in terms of their frequency and these waveforms we'll see subsequently are seen at different locations on the scalp and in different stages of your wakefulness and sleep but you have to understand that these alpha waves are normally seen in wakefulness but if it is being seen during uh, sleep also that may become abnormal so like similarly theta waves or delta waves are mostly seen during the sleep phase but if you are finding it during the wakefulness that may be abnormal so that is why recognizing the waves this is finding in the uh, uh, which uh, range and in which state will tell you this is a normal wave or this is an abnormal wave on that part 
most often you will find that you get a mixture of waves. You don't get a very clear alpha waves, beta waves, or theta waves. What you get is basically mixture waves, like what you see in this uh, EEG. They have got like this is one second from this line to this line, and this is one wave, and this is one up stroke, down a stroke. This is complete one wave, and maybe this is the half wave. So this is, this falls into the delta range because this is less than. Four hertz. But if you look at this part, you what you find that on top of these waves, there are small, small waves also, like these ones. Maybe better seen in this location, these small waves, which is uh, which is over the uh, slower waves. So what we call this is mixture of frequency. This is predominantly delta wave with superimposed beta activities, which we can see in a child who is comatose and is receiving midazolam infusion. Or those kinds of drugs because of the parts. So this is superimposed beta over the delta waves mixture of frequencies on the part. Second, what we see is the amplitude of the wave. So that means that how high is the wave? Normally, you find that the waves amplitude are between 10 to 50 microvolts in the human brain. So you measure from the base to the peak of a wave to measure it. And all the EEG machines have got now the amplitude measurement uh, uh, indicator by which you can measure the Amplitudes, because if the amplitudes are high, like what we see in cases of hip arrhythmias, they would take high amplitude waves. Or amplitude may be low, what we see in cases of even hip uh, electro decrement or burst suppression patterns, suppression of background activities, or an encephalitis pattern, basically. So knowing the amplitude will be important that uh, uh, the, the 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 EEG is normal or for the abnormal part. Then comes the morphology of the waves. So as I said to you, one wave constitutes of one up stroke and then one down stroke. And if it is not crossing the midline once, it is monophasic waves. If it is the crossing, if it is crossing the baseline again and then coming up, it is a biphasic waves. If it is the crossing the baseline a number of times, it becomes a polyphasic waves. So normally, like a spike and waves are like these ones. So like they have got one spike. And then they go down and they come up. So this is called a spike and wave kind of pattern, which will, my doctor Chandrakanta will be talking about more about these kinds of patterns. But this is the morphology of the wave. Normally we expect waves like monophasic waves. These may be abnormal, the biphasic and the polyphasic waves on the part. Then similarly in the morphology, you can have the monomorphic waves. Like all the waves are of the similar amplitude and frequency. Like you see in this one, this is. One second, and you see almost one, maybe two waves, and so similarly you can see two hertz per uh, two uh, waves per second, and morphology also. They are of the similar uh, 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 amplitude. So this is called as the monomorphic waves, which can be an indicative of abnormalities, seizures, or sometimes they can be polymorphic, so of different uh, morphology, like amplitude and the frequency. Like here it is. Uh, of some different uh, of frequency, and here it is of different frequency, or here it is of different frequency in these waves. This is uh, a polymorphic waves on the part. So this is about the EEG waveforms. So you 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 locate about the you know about the EEG uh, uh, the different waveforms in terms of their frequency, alpha, beta, theta, delta, in terms of their amplitude, 10 to uh, uh, 50 microvolt is the normal range, and in terms of their Uh, morphology, they are monophasic, biphasic, or polyphasic part. So now comes the EEG waveforms. When we see these EEG, uh, these waveforms, as I mentioned to you, have to be seen in three clinical contexts basically. The first in the form of age, because age has got uh, a lot of variations in the uh, waveforms, their frequency, their morphology. Second. Uh, uh the uh, the older you become your waveforms are much more uh, on the slower side second and more important is your state if you are in sleep phase as i mentioned to you where waves become much more slower you go in the theta and uh, delta range if you are awake you should be more in the alpha range especially more than 3 years of age you should be doing the right range so stays knowing the stage is very very important normally technicians mentions about the part that now the sleep has started it is wakefulness on the part and waveforms also changes with the activation procedures we'll talk about the part the hyperventilation and the photic stimulations so when you see the eeg waveforms you got two ways to see these eegs i mean waveforms on a part either you see 
you make a mental list of your elements like your, you know from the history from the requisition this is a 10 year old child apparently healthy child and i'm going to see an eeg which has got both awake and sleep record so it means that you got a mental picture of a 10 year old child in wakefulness you are going to see the as we discussed about the alpha waves in the posteriorly and when you go into sleep you are going to see more of a slower waves the theta delta waves along with the uh, sleep features so you go with a mental picture that this i am going to see and if i am finding anything missing or anything extra then it may be something which has to be looked for that is one way of looking at the eeg part the second way is this that you start looking at the pages and you find that what i am seeing so like i am seeing this uh, 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 theta waves on this page but is this child awake no he is sleeping it means this is abnormal so you see the waves and then you take a call i am seeing the alpha waves but the child is sleeping it means this is abnormal this can be an alpha coma in the way so that is the other way of reading the eeg part and you can combine the th i mean things uh, both the things together so like as you mature uh, in your eeg reading it becomes automatic and you start combining both the things together so you get the, you write the eeg you order an eeg and you know that what i am looking for in this child a child with the uh, uh, non epileptic events you see the eeg can be normal a child with the uh, uh, childhood absence epilepsy you know that i'll be getting the hyperventilation three hertz spike and wave kind of pattern so you go with a mental picture but you keep on looking at each and every pages on the part so this is the part so now look at this eeg this is an eeg of uh, almost around 10 year old child and if i look at this and this is an entero posterior longitudinal month chart this is the left part of the brain because this is fp1 f7 f73 we discussed yesterday about the uh, odd numbers representing the left part of the brain and this is the uh, right part of the brain in blue because this is fp2 f4 f8 t4 t4 t6 and t6 o2 so this is uh, left part this is right this is left this is right and this is bipolar montage so what we are seeing is this this is the entero posterior because this is frontopolar and this is temporo occipital so what you are seeing that this is an awake 10 year old child so i know from looking at this uh, a couple of slides before that awake 10 year old child should have an alpha rhythm in the background background means normally we look at the background either grossly or in the posterior location so look at this part you get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 fine so this is almost in the alpha range so this is awake 10 year old child the waveforms appear to be normal and what you see i'll just say okay, this is called as entero posterior gradient when you see an uh, awake child wakefulness that means anteriorly the waveforms are faster you can't calculate also but they are smaller in amplitude posteriorly the waveforms are slower you can count but they are larger in amplitude this is an entero posterior gradient which is a normal finding it should be there in an easy part so alpha rhythm well developed by eight years of the age frequency increases with the age 8 to 13 hertz hospital location just now we saw on the previous eeg it appears in relaxed wakefulness disappears when you open the eyes so when the eyes are closed and you are awake you see the alpha rhythm if the eyes are open and you are awake alpha rhythm goes off normally by three years onwards you must get off eight hertz per second below three years you may have lower frequency of the uh, posterior dominant rhythm they may not be in the alpha range in that sense but uh, beyond three years of the age you should start getting the eight hertz and above the uh, posterior dominant rhythm so posterior dominant rhythm is the rhythm which you see in the occiput visually this is in the alpha range that's why we call them as the alpha rhythm but it may not be in the alpha range especially if you're seeing a child of one year it can be normal but if a child of you're looking at a child of uh, eight years and you're finding a waveform in the posterior at, at of five hertz that is something which is uh, maybe abnormal on that side so we talked about the anterior posterior gradient over the part so now look at this eeg so what we saw, we saw about the alpha rhythm or posterior dominant rhythm and the rhythm which is dominant in the posterior location and which is found in the wakefulness with the eyes open so look at this part p3 over and left part of the brain and you count this is one second and you count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten this is 10 hertz and this is the alpha rhythm posterior dominant rhythm the moment the eyes are open these are the 
uh, artifacts because of the eyes opening and we will have an artifact class also you see the posterior rhythm has vanished disappeared so posterior rhythm the alpha rhythm disappears by opening the eyes because you have become uh, maybe uh, attentive on the part so when the visual attention is not there you get the posterior dominant rhythm the alpha rhythm on the part but as i mentioned to you if it is persisting when you are uh, kind of like uh, uh, sleeping also when your eyes are uh, 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 open also that can be a part of alpha coma because it should be reactive reactive means when the eyes are open it should disappear if it is still persisting it can be abnormal and it can be a sign of uh, gross brain damage on the part second is the beta rhythm the name says it is more than 13 hertz normally seen in drowsiness especially disappears during the uh, uh, the latter part of the sleep and we see anteriorly we have seen basically in different of in different uh, ages these are the beta waves you see anteriorly posteriorly you see more of an alpha waves especially in the drowsiness or maybe in the wakefulness also the beta waves you see generalized beta normally we see with the uh, lot of drugs being given in those cases theta rhythm is less than 8 hertz more than 4 hertz seen in drowsy state and in sleep and if it is uh, found in the wakefulness it may be abnormal on the part so look at the theta waves normally you find less than uh, 8 hertz if you count in these parts delta is less than 4 hertz and uh, that also being seen as you saw in cases of sleep or sometimes when you do the hyperventilation you may see you may see the slower waves because of the cerebral ischemia on the part and you see these are the delta waves you count 1 2 3 4 one second and you four waves so normally you count the waves posteriorly t6 o2 on the part especially if you're looking at other waves apart from the beta because beta normally you see more anteriorly like you see over here also on the part this is a normal sleep showing some amount of beta and a lot of uh, i mean uh, delta waves posteriorly on the part so you see theta waves when the uh, amplitude so even the frequency is less than eight one two three four five six seven these are the thetas and then you got the delta waves when it is less than four, one, two, three, four. So the similar one EG pain has got both theta waves and the delta waves in the location. So you identify the wake, uh, the wake, the EG pattern. As I mentioned to you before, if you're seeing a delta pattern in a child who is awake, eight years of the age, like you see in this child, that is abnormal. That suggests an encephalopathy state on the part. Sometimes you can get occipital delta, like you see in these cases that also may be abnormal if it is in the awake state sometimes you can get the frontal delta like in these ones you see frontally delta waves that can also be abnormal and suggestive of some metabolic encephalopathies and those ones coming to the second part of the normal waveforms we do the activation procedures commonly we do the hyperventilation and photic stimulation hyperventilation we do for almost around uh, 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 three minutes Normally, we don't do in children with the stroke or moya moya because that can give rise to the cerebral ischemia and you can uh, precipitate further brain damage. It provokes abscess seizure. We all have been taught about the uh, abscess seizure three as a spike and wave because of the hyperventilation. But what happens with the hyperventilation? Because of the decreased blood flow to the brain, you get the slowing of the waveforms, like what you see in these waveforms. The waveforms become slower and they have gone to the delta line, which is normal. Normally, hyperventilation technician writes about this is HBT starts and HBT stops. You get it by that part. Photic stimulation is also done in our normal routine lab. And this is from the three to almost around 30 hertz. What you get with the photic stimulation is that you, uh, uh, you, uh, you get a response in the occipital cortex because of the photic uh, 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 stimulation. You get the photic driving when you get the similar kind of occipital waves. As, as the photic uh, stimulation, uh, 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 the frequency, or you can have the photopraxinal response also, where you get uh, an effect from the activity uh, in the part, or uh, uh, you can have the photoconvulsive uh, response also when you can get the uh, true seizures with the uh, photic stimulation. Normally, these are, case, these are the cases where we see uh, in, in Jindai epilepsy, which are photosensitive so like this is photic stimulation you're giving the photic five hertz and you're finding the five hertz response in the occiput one two three four five so you give the five hertz photic and you get the five hertz response you give the eight hertz you get the eight hertz response in the 
uh, occiput. This is photic driving on the part. And if it is a photo paroxysmal response, when the when with the response, when the photic stimulation, you get a generalized uh, epileptiform activity, and that is suggestive of photosensitive epilepsy on that part. Now coming to the second part about our sleep state. You get the three things, vertex waves, spindles, and K complexes. Vertex waves are sharply contoured waves, which are present at the vertex, that is the seated location. And uh, they may extend anteriorly, but normally they are seen, seen in the stage one of the sleep part. Look at these waves. So for the vertex wave, you have to look at the central location, frontal central, C4, P4. Then similarly, at the C3, P3, in these locations, you get the uh, sharply contoured waves. So these are typical of the vertex waves. You don't see much uh, anteriorly or much posteriorly these waves. At times they can be seen in the runs, but the idea to pick them up is that they are still more prominent over the center location and you get in the stage one of the sleep on the part. After the vertex, you get in stage two is the spindles. So they, as the name says, they are like spindle-like activity of 11 to 16 Hertz. And they're also seen over the center location on the part. Uh, uh, these are the spindle live states. We'll see a couple of more slides of those ones. So they are like almost around 13 to 14 hertz waves, and they are more seen over the center location, C4, C, and uh, C3, P3, those locations, the spindle waves. So they are the normal waves of uh, sleep. Third is the K complex. K complex is a biphagic or triphagic sharp waves. We saw about the wave morphology in the beginning, which are followed by a sleep spindles, and they're also seen in the sleep only. So what you see a biphagic or triphagic waves. So waves going up, down, and then coming up, and then maybe followed by the spindles. So waves, high amplitude waves going up, down, and then followed by the spindles part. These are the K complexes. They're also a feature of a normal sleep pattern where you find. These are like a K complexes, waves going up, down, and then up again. So these are classical of sleep, uh, uh, I mean, uh, characteristics of waveforms in the part. So these are the spindles, as you saw, like a spinning activity, and these are the K complexes. So these are the K complexes. The more you see these uh, EEGs, uh, in the sleep EEG, I mean to say, the more you get accumulated with these kinds of complexes, basically. Drowsiness, I will just escape because they're not so uh, seen routinely in the part. So what do you see? Recapitulation, awake, eye close, you should get basically posterior rhythm present, eyes opening, low voltage, and you start losing of your posterior rhythm. Uh, uh, if it is a stage one sleep, you get the vortex wave. It is stage two sleep. It is a spindles. And if it is, uh, or, or you can get the K complexes. So uh, that is the part. So just to recollect, we are seeing the wakefulness. You see the posterior dominant rhythm. I'll take a couple of minutes more. So a posterior dominant rhythm, so it means like an eight-year-old child, you see alpha waves, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is wakefulness characteristic. And then you may see the beta waves. If you're seeing with the eyes open, eyes closed, the moment your eyes open, you lose the alpha waves. That is the uh, characteristic of uh, a posterior dominant rhythm. In the wakefulness part, drowsiness, you see uh, uh, less amount of alpha you see more of a theta wave in those cases, drowsiness. At times, vortex may start appearing in those cases. A stage two, you get vortex and the spindles and the K complexes. If you get arousal from the sleep, you get a lot of muscle and the movement artifacts on the part. So what is the summary? Wakefulness again, posterior rhythm, anterior posterior gradient, sleep, vortex wave, K complexes, sleep spindles. So this is the part, wakefulness, posterior rhythm, which is reactive to the eye opening. And in the sleep, you get the vortex, spindles, and K complexes. In brief, these are the things which you have to remember. So understanding EG, we talked in the beginning, we need to look at the age because age dependent things are there. A state, we just now saw sleep has got different features, awake has got different features. How does the background and what do you find in the photic stimulation and in the hyperventilation on the part? Abnormalities can be because of the background or because of any discharges. Dr. Chandrakanta will be talking about those parts on the part. So how to read an EEG? Last couple of slides. Uh, definitely look at the montages, the anterior posterior montage, bipolar is most commonly we see. See for any artifacts, we have got different class for that. Organization, you look, how is the waveforms? We saw, we talked about the uh, mental picture and then the landscape. 
look at the general background. How do you see beta in the front and uh, alpha in the back? Basically, any asymmetry with the left and right hemisphere. Look for any uh, any focal glaring uh, uh, abnormalities on the EEG part. And when we start reporting, you report in these matters what the patient details, his age, and the uh, uh, I mean name and all those things. And then state the sleep awake, sedated versus non-sedated, because once you get some medicines, it may give a generalized beta also. Some medicines may give. Uh, activation procedure by then or not, or children may not be cooperative for the hyperventricity, especially the young children, whether you have done it or not. What are the background rhythm? Background means what is the posterior dominant rhythm kind of thing? What is the most obvious rhythm in the, uh, uh, in the child? If a child is awake and you're getting all theta, that could be an abnormal thing. Sleep features, hyperventilation, or any abnormality. So you light in these things. EEG techniques, the background, the features, the hyperventilation, photic function, what are the abnormalities and what is the summary and what is your impression on the part? Normally we write like technique, this is routine, awake EEGs from electrodes placed according to the 1020 system, findings, wakefulness, background activities continuous, anterior posterior gradient is there, posterior dominant rhythm is 8 to 10 hertz, reactive to eye opening, hyperventilation was, was normal, photic was normal, there were no abnormalities seen. The sleep features were present in the form of vertex wave, K complexes, and spindles. This is a normal EEG, and this is a normal impression on the part. Look at this EEG, small graph. You can look at this part. This is one second, one, one, one second. You can see maybe a couple of vertex waves here because these are the waves and the fundamental location in this part. And you get the, uh, uh, the report and the impression in that sense. So right, we'll discuss about the part. So normal EEG, background rhythm, you have to talk about the age, the state, sleep awake. This is symmetrical, both sides, synchronous, both sides. Wakefulness, sleep, arousal. Normally because in children it becomes difficult to pick up the arousal part and maybe sometimes the drowsiness part also. And then hyperventilation and photic stimulation on the part. So uh, this is about the normal EEG. I think we're just within time. And then we'll have the second part as an abnormal EG. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Praveen. Uh, in fact, uh, this was very excellent presentation, clearing all doubts and uh, going with in so slow pace just to act for better understanding by all uh, delegates. And the best part was uh, your reporting. So, so uh, we, we are just in time, but I would like to uh, tell the, all the delegates that all will be given a chance in our offline part that um, you all will be given different EEG reports and you have to make the report out of that. Uh, and Dr. Amit, uh, there is no confusion in the reporting. The basic thing is that you have to see what you have to see. First of all, you have to see what you have to see. One recording setting that I have just told you, Dr. Praveen, I am just getting this liberty to uh, repeat a few of the points by uh, you. Setting, which system is, 1020 system of electrode placement, awake or not. Uh, sleep EG hai, ya agar sleep hai to induced sleep hai ki natural sleep hai, induced hai to concept drug diya hai, kitni dose mein wo bhi likhna hai aapko, aur uh, uske frequency kitni amplitude, kitna jo aapki sensitivity aapne kya rakhi hai, wo rakhna hai. Then background, background first line jo hai aapki ki kaun si background hai, dominant hai, to usually ye posterior dominant rhythm hota hai, wo aapko background rhythm pe dhyan dekhna hai. Background rhythm is simply like ki yudh ke maidan mein ghuse to mahol kaisa hai. To wo background rhythm ek tarah ka mahol hai, jo batata hai ki haan ye jo hai, background mein humara ye chal raha hai, jo chal raha hai. Then we, agar wo sleep record hai, to sleep record mein jaisa bataya, eye artifacts pe bahut jada hai. Artifacts bahut jada hote hai, uske baare mein एक अलग से टॉक है और आर्टिफैक्ट सबसे ज्यादा कंफ्यूज लोगों को करते हैं खास करके बेगिनर्स में तो बहुत ज्यादा कंफ्यूज करते हैं सीजर्स वर्सेस के स्पेंडल इसके बारे में डॉक्टर प्रवीण ने बताया इसको और एलिबोरेट करेंगे वो जैसे केस के स्पेंडल्स या वर्टेक्स वेव ये अगर आप बहुत करसरी सरसरी तौर पे देखेंगे तो आप धोखा भी खा सकते हैं तो इसको पहचानना जरूरी है कि आई मूवमेंट आर्टिफैक्ट और आपके स्पिंडल वेव 
स्लीप स्पिंडल्स एंड के कॉम्प्लेक्सेस ये सारी चीजों को हम लोग समझें कि क्या सीजर है नहीं है देन वी लुक फॉर एनी एम नॉर्मल तो नॉर्मलिटीज बहुत ज्यादा नहीं होती है बेसिकली वो चार पांच चीजें ही होती हैं स्पाइक स्पाइक एंड वेव शार्प वेव फेज रिवर्सल यूजली मोस्ट लाइकली इन चारों में से कोई एक चीज होती है या अनएक्सपेक्टेड स्लोइंग अगर है तो वो फोकस के हिसाब से सो so, अगर कहीं फोकल स्लोइंग है तो दैट इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर सम एस्पेक्ट एंड थैंक यू वंस अगेन डॉक्टर प्रवीण फॉर योर एक्सेलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन आप इन कुछ के स्पेंडल के बारे में मुझे लग रहा था के कॉम्प्लेक्स के बारे में कुछ और बताते हाँ uh and uh, see uh, these uh, k complexes you are rightly said k complexes vortex waves and spindles they are very easily confused with the abnormalities on the eeg that is the one thing second thing so uh, uh, you mm. have to be i mean the the best part to understand is this ki any abnormalities on the eeg has got a field normally jo brain mein koi discharges kahi se nikalta hai it is तो वो वहीं पे नहीं रुकता है वो उसका एक स्प्रेड होता है वो एंटेरियरली पोस्टेरियरली स्प्रेड होगा फिर वो तो जो पहला चीज हमें देखना होता है कि जो हमारा वर्टेक्स वेब है वो सेंटर लोकेशन पे होता है सी जेड पे होगा एफ थ्री सी थ्री एफ फोर सी फोर पे होगा यूजुअली वो एंटेरियरली या पोस्टेरियरली उसका पार्ट नहीं होता है फिर वो उसका जो फेज रिबल्सल होता है वो सी जेड पे होता है उसकी मोफोलॉजी भी मोर ऑफ ए शापे होती है उसमें स्प्रेड नहीं होता है और वो रिपीट करता है फिर वो तो कोई अगर अब नॉर्मलिटीज निकल के आती है वहां से तो आप देखेंगे कि वो आगे की तरफ स्प्रेड होगी एंटेरियरली जाएगी फ्रंटो टेम्पोरल में जाएगी या हॉस्पिटल में जाएगी जो हमारे सिग्निफिकेंट स्पाइक ट्रिप्स होते हैं सिमिलरली स्पिंडल्स आर इजी टू पिकअप बिकॉज दे डोंट है दे हैव द साइनोसाइडल मोफोलॉजी जो उसका गोला सा मोफोलॉजी होता है इसका स्पिंडल्स का तो उसमें नॉर्मली हमारे स्पाइक्स वाली मोफोलॉजी होती नहीं है और इनका जो फ्रीक्वेंसी भी होता है वो ट्वेल्व टू थर्टीन हर्ट्स के आसपास का होता है तो स्पिंडल्स को हम आसानी से पिकअप कर लेते हैं और वो भी सिर्फ उसमें ही होता है रही के कॉम्प्लेक्सेस की तो वो थोड़ा कभी कभी डिफिकल्ट होता है बिकॉज समटाइम्स इफ यू डोंट लुक एट क्लियरली दे आर मोर डिफ्यूज इन नेचर बिकॉज दे कैन दे स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एंटेरियर एंड दे रन टू आर दोस्टेड पार्ट के कॉम्प्लेक्सेस का पार्ट लेकिन उसका जो के कॉम्प्लेक्सेस का ट्रिक है कि मोस्टली दैट इज दैट कम्स अलोंग विद द स्पिंडल्स तो एक ऐसा वेव जो एंटेरियर से पोस्टेरियरली में हो शार्प कंटूर में हो लेकिन उसके साथ में स्पिंडल हो चांसेस ज्यादा है वो के कॉम्प्लेक्स के साथ में होगा और उसकी जो मॉर्फोलॉजी होती है दैट साइडली ऑन द वाइडर साइड वो वाइड होता आपने देखा होगा कि वो जो उसकी विर्थ है दैट इज स्लाइटली ऑन द वाइडर साइड एज कम्पेयर टू व्हाट नॉर्मली वी सी इन द इन द स्पाइक्स और इवन इन द इन द नॉर्मल शार्प वॉट वी सी एंड दैट इज फॉलोड बाई द स्पिंडल्स and most often they are sleep features they only come in the sleep part normally jo hamare discharges hote hain hum usko dekhte hain ki intertally wo awakefulness mein bhi to nahi aa rahi hai so these things helps us in making or this is a normal sleep or this is something which is abnormal so this is like a, a your visual impression the number of times you see you start picking them on the part thank you thank you dr pravin uh, i want to uh, just um, tell the all the delegates कि अग, मैं देख रहा हूँ चैट बॉक्स में बहुत ज्यादा कमेंट्स नहीं आ रहे हैं तो एंड आई एम वेरी मच श्योर कि इतना आसान कोर्स भी नहीं है कि मन में डाउट्स ना आए तो अगर आप चैट बॉक्स को जिंदा रखेंगे मन के डाउट्स को क्लियर करते रहेंगे तो आपको जो है ना इंटरेस्ट लगता रहेगा फिर आप उसमें और इन्वॉल्व होंगे इट इज नॉट सिंपल लेक्चर वे मेथड अगर लेक्चर लेक्चर के तौर पे सुनते रहेंगे तो फिर शायद वो मकसद आपका पूरा नहीं होगा तो लाइक डॉक्टर अमित रस्तोगी आप अपना कमेंट करते रहे कुछ कुछ कमेंट करते रहे अच्छा लगे तो भी खराब लगे तो भी उसे एक माहौल बना रहता है एंड नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट आवर सेकेंड स्पीकर ऑफ टूडे सेशन डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर चंद्रकांता डॉक्टर प्रोफेसर चंद्रकांता शी इज प्रोफेसर ऑफ पीडियाट्रिक्स इन के जी एम यू लखनऊ यूनिवर्सिटी एंड शी हैज गॉट ए स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट इन पीडियाट्रिक न्यूरोलॉजी एंड शी हैज शी इज ऑलरेडी डूइंग पीडियाट्रिक न्यूरोलॉजी फॉर कपल ऑफ इयर्स सो डॉक्टर चंद्रकांता मैडम प्लीज प्लीज स्टार्ट योर सेशन यू कैन शेयर योर स्क्रीन थैंक यू डॉक्टर अजय 
and a very sincere thanks to AOP UP, Dr. Ajay, Dr. Praveen for giving me this opportunity. And I'm happy to see Dr. Rashmi Kumar who told me about the alpha, beta, delta of EEG. So should I, should I share my screen? So is my screen visible? Yes, yes. And I'm audible? Yeah. So uh, Dr. Praveen has taken a very nice lecture and have told you about the normal EEG. And I will be talking about the abnormal EEG. So knowing the normal waves, normal EEG is very important because most of the time uh, there is no problem in identifying the suspicious area on EEG. But the problem is that whether that suspicious area is abnormal or normal. So knowing normal is more important. And we will now uh, discuss about the abnormal EEG waves. So the objective is the identification of abnormal EEG waves. And I will just cover the common things. So EEG abnormality, they can be focal and generalized. Okay, so focal means that the findings are restricted to the particular area of the brain and generalized when the findings are generalized. Generalized means that they are present on both the sides of the hemisphere, left and right, and from anterior to posterior part. Okay, so first I start with the focal EEG abnormalities. So the focal EEG abnormalities can be either in the form of background abnormalities or they can be focal epileptic form discharges. And there are some particular patterns of focal abnormalities we will discuss. And we will learn how to localize the focal abnormalities and they can be focal ictal discharges. So mostly what we see in EEG is the interact ictal discharges. So the child don't have convulsion at that time. But if the child is converging during the recording, it's called ictal recording. So what can be the focal background abnormalities? So background abnormalities can be in the form of amplitude asymmetry, background, background asynchrony, alpha asymmetry or focal delta slowing, and they can be some abnormalities found during hyperventilation. So uh, Dr. Praveen has already discussed how to measure the voltage of a wave. So amplitude asymmetry means that there is difference in the amplitude of the waves between the two hemispheres. So if there is a gross damage to the one side of the brain, then on that side, we will get low voltage activity. Like uh, there is hemiatrophy on one side of the brain, we will get low voltage of activity on that side. So in this EEG, you can see, so this is the left side of the cerebral hemisphere, odd number F73, and they have normal voltage. And if you see the right side of the cerebral hemisphere, you see that the voltage of the wave is low. Amplitude is low in comparison to the left side. And this difference should be more than 25%. If it is less than 25%, that is normal. And sometimes this asymmetry may not be obvious uh, during the recording, but it becomes obvious during the hyperventilation. So we look for the amplitude. And... Uh, there may be asymmetry of the alpha waves also. So in this, you can see from previous that the other waves, they have almost the equal uh, amplitude on both the sides. But if you just focus on the alpha rhythm, alpha we know now that we see in occipital area. So this is left occipital and this is right occipital area. So you can see the 
difference in the amplitude of the alpha waves. So this is alpha asymmetry and can be found like uh, some lesion in the occipital area. So that can be alpha asymmetry. And then background abnormalities can be in form of asynchrony. Synchronous background means that both the sides have almost similar type of waves, the left and the right. Okay. But if you see in this uh, picture, okay, so this is the left side and we see that there is a spindle over here. Okay. But there is no simultaneous spindle on right side. Okay. And similarly here, here spindle is seen on right side and not on the left side. So they are not coming simultaneously. So this is it. This is asynchrony between the two sides. And this asynchronous sleep spindle, this can be normal in infants and can be abnormal in older children. So the normal backgrounds should be synchronous and there should be no asymmetry. And the waves should be what we expect according to the age of the child and according to the state, whether the child is awake, sleep, light sleep, or deep sleep. Then the abnormality, the background abnormality can be in form of slowing of the wave. So this is showing you the focal slow delta waves. So if you see here, in comparison to the rest of the part of the EEG, so here waves are faster, they are not so high amplitude. Here it is delta frequency range. So we are getting the focal delta slowing that can be due to some structural cause in that reason. So abnormality doesn't always mean the epileptic form discharges. So, there's so many abnormalities possible in EEG. So, and the abnormality can be in the form of epileptic form discharges. And now we are aware about the terms spike and sharp and polyspike. Okay. So, what is a spike and what is sharp? Okay. So, this, these terms we will uh, listen uh, again and again. Okay. So, uh, in EG, if you see, there are two types of vertical lines. Okay. So this is dark uh, lines and in between there are faint lines, okay? So this is one second and this area, one small area, this is equivalent to 200 millisecond. So the duration of the wave decides whether it is a spike or a sharp. So a spike is sh uh, shorter wave and the duration is less than 70 millisecond and uh, some books write less than 80. Sharp is relatively uh, broader uh, waves and the duration is between 70 to 200 millisecond. But practically when we see, uh, we hardly calculate it whether it is spike or sharp, the appearance is also important. So it is said, that if a wave is looking, the tip looking like if you, it is going to hurt you, it is a spike. Okay. So a spike has a nature, like it looks like a spike. Okay. And these spike and sharp, they are often followed by the a slow wave. So uh, pattern, epileptic form pattern can be a spike wave pattern like this, a spike followed by a slow high voltage wave or it can be a sharp and a sharp and wave complex or the other variety may be a poly spike wave pattern okay so here you see there is only one spike and it is followed by the wave here you see there are multiple spikes multiple spikes and this is followed by a wave distorted high voltage wave. So this is poly spike and wave pattern. And this pattern we often get in myoclonic type of epilepsies. 
So what are the characteristics of epileptic form discharges which, which will help us that it is not an artifact or this is not a uh, normal uh, thing. So most of the epileptic form discharges, they stand out from the background. What it means that you don't, uh, you don't need to try to find out the spike and wave. It is obvious, okay? so it stands out from the background. There is negative phase due to paroxysmal depolarization. I will show you. And there is after coming wave due to hyperpolarization. And they have electrical field. And on bipolar montage, they show phase reversal. So what is electrical field? So uh, you must have seen when we throw a stone in the water. So the waves are formed and the amplitude of the wave will be maximum at that point where we have thrown the stone. And then there are slower waves towards the periphery. Okay? So the abnormality doesn't restrict to a particular area. It has a field. So surrounding area to that particular electrode will also show abnormality. If only a single electrode is showing abnormality, it's most likely an artifact, not a true epileptic form discharge. So like in this picture, in this EEG, you can see that there are spikes and waves these are the abnormal spike wave discharges. So they have maximum uh, amplitude at frontal area. Okay? And this is right frontal. Even number is right. Okay, So right frontal region, the amplitude is maximum. But it's not restricted to the frontal area. The other part is sh also showing a field. There is slight small, small spike wave pattern in the other part also. So uh, in monopolar montage, monopolar means that we are recording the electrical activity of one electrode in reference with the referential electrode. So in monopolar montage, the abnormal area will show the maximum amplitude and the remaining will show the smaller amplitude of abnormal waves. So in this EG, we can see probably it is the right frontal area which is causing problem. In bipolar montage, the epileptic form discharges, they show phase reversal. Okay. What is phase reversal? Phase reversal means when uh, we are uh, means, uh, recording the activity between the two electrodes, when we go towards the negative area, we get a negative deflection. So uh, there in this phase reversal, you can see that one spike is coming down, the other spike is going up. Okay. So during depolarization, in negative electric field is generated. When the epileptic form discharges they are generating, there is depolarization of the area and this is a negative field. So this phase reversal will point towards the negative area. So here we are getting a phase reversal at C3. So likely that epileptic form discharge is originating from the C3. This is again showing a phase reversal. So if you see in this one spike is coming down, the other is going up and here is showing a phase reversal. So in this likely electrode near to the epileptic form discharge, it is F7. So uh, 
So, uh, to summarize the epileptic form discharges, they have a field, they show phase reversal on bipolar montage. There is first negative wave. So in EG negative wave means that it is going up and it is followed by a slow wave. Okay? And this slow wave, this is spike is due to depolarization of the area. And after that, there is hyperpolarization of that area, which causes a slow wave. So a spike followed by a slow wave. So we can see uh, that focal abnormalities can be epileptiform, non-epileptiform, and there are some special type of pattern. Dr. Praveen has already discussed that they can be intermittent rhythmic delta activity. So in this, you can see there is rhythmic delta activity in the frontal area. And depending on the location, we call them, uh, there are different names. Okay? So like if it is in frontal area, it is FIRDA, F-I-R-D-A, FIRDA. If it is in occipital area, this is ORIDA. Okay? And if it is in temporal area, TIDA. Okay? So intermittent rhythmic delta activity we can found in cases of encephalopathy. Then there can be periodic lateralized discharges. You must have heard this name in herpes encephalitis. Okay, so what is periodic? Periodic means that your spike wave or normality is coming at a regular interval. And what is lateralized? That it is lateralized to one side. So periodic epileptic form discharges lateralized. Often we get in herpes encephalitis encephalitis, but we can get in other conditions also. So these were the focal abnormalities. Now the generalized easy abnormalities. They can again be a background abnormality or they can be generalized epileptic form discharges. They can be some special pattern pointing towards a specific epilepsy syndrome and they can be ictal discharges, generalized. So background abnormalities can be low amplitude EEG. They can be generalized flowing or generalized fast activity of the waves. It can be hip arrhythmia or bus suppression pattern. So what is low amplitude EEG? So in normal EEG, you see the waves coming. In this EEG, you hardly see any waves. The, it is looking like a straight line. So low amplitude EEG when the voltage is less than 20 microvolt, we call it as low voltage EEG. And this can be seen like in cases of severe birth asphyxia and indicates a poor prognosis. And then there can be generalized slowing of the EEG. So focal slowing we get mostly in focal uh, pathology of the brain. Generalized slowing we get in like cases of encephalopathy. But before saying that there is slowing of the EEG, we should know the child's age and whether the child is sleeping, okay? Like this EEG. This EEG is showing the delta waves. So delta waves for awake EEG, that is abnormal. It is a slow wave. It indicates that there is some problem. But if it is a sleep EEG, N2 or N3 stage, then this EEG is perfectly normal because we get delta in sleep. So before commenting that it is slowing, you need to confirm whether the child is sleeping or the child is awake. Then the generalized abnormality background can be in form of fast beta activity. Okay? So this EEG, you can say all over the EEG, this is showing a fast beta activity. Activity. And this can be found like in cases of uh, certain drugs like uh, diazepam, we have used for sedation or generalized fast beta activity can be there. Then we all uh, are aware about the hip arrhythmia 
And what is hypsrythmia? It is a total disruption of the background. We hardly see any background rhythm or a bass line. The waves are going up and down. They are slow, delta waves, high voltage, chaotic background, and there are spike wave discharges in between and the poly spike wave discharges are there. And there can be bus suppression pattern. So bus suppression pattern is very easy to recognize. There are areas of the bus which shows the high voltage uh, burst of uh, spike wave discharges or other waves. And this burst is followed by the suppression of the background and the line looks almost straight. So this is bus suppression background. You can get in uh, like Otahara syndrome or early myoclonic epilepsies, sometimes in West also. So generalized abnormalities can be in the form of background abnormalities or they can be generalized epileptiform discharges. So what are the types of generalized epileptiform discharges? Can be spike wave pattern, poly spike wave pattern, three hertz, spike wave pattern and photoproxismal response. So this is showing a generalized spike and wave discharges. And if you notice that in between, like this is a spike and this is wave. Okay. This is left side and this is right side. So generalized means abnormality left and right and from anterior to posterior. So this is generalized spike and wave discharges. Then there can be generalized poly spike wave discharges. Often we get in myoclonic epilepsies like juvenile my myoclonic epilepsy. So there are multiple spikes followed by the wave and it is generalized. And three hertz spike and wave pattern, which we typically see in absence epilepsy and looks very beautiful. Okay, so what is three hertz spike wave pattern? We already know how to uh, count the frequency. So this is one second. And now if you count how many spike and wave in one second, one, two, and three. So this is three hertz spike and wave patterns and lies, which is found in absence epilepsy. And this is this can be precipitated by the hyperventilation. So in typical absence epilepsy, there is normal background in this sudden appearance of generalized three hertz spike wave discharges. And then the abnormality can be in the form of photoparoxysmal response. So what is photoparoxysmal response? We know that we use hyperventilation and cortic stimulation to precipitate the epileptic form discharges. And how to know that the photic stimulation is going on? Photoparoxysmal response means that when we are giving photic stimulation, there is precipitation of the epileptic form discharges and often we get in myoclonic epilepsies and uh, if a child has photosensitivity like this we have to avoid flickering light and those uh, type of thing because that can precipitate epilepsy so how to recognize that photic stimulation is going on there is always one indicator either above or below the eeg indicating that it's photic stimulation is going on and during photic stimulation, they are generalized epileptic form discharge. And this should be no, uh, not confused with the photic drive response. What is photic drive response is a normal response to photic stimulation. Dr. Praveen has already told that the frequency of the photic stimulation will match the suspicious area or suspicious spike. So the frequency is same it starts with photic stimulation and ends up abruptly at the end of the photic stimulation. So this is a normal response. This is not a spike and wave discharges. This is photic drive response. Then there can be generalized periodic epileptic form discharges. 
So to know the periodicity, periodicity, you have to look many pages. If you're just looking on one page, it's difficult to decide that it is periodic. If you know, uh, if you see many pages, then you will notice that it is occurring almost after same duration. Okay? And this is showing actually the R complexes, sharp and slow wave complexes, periodic, which we found in cases of SSP. Then uh, the epileptiform discharge can also be in form of fast beta activity, the paroxysmal fast beta activity or beta burst. So this is different from the generalized beta activity background. That was all over the record was beta. But here, if you see, there is sudden burst of the generalized beta activity and this high voltage. So this is also epileptiform discharge type of epileptiform discharge often we get in cases of lennox gastrot syndrome. And there can be slow spike wave discharges in cases of LGS. So in this picture, if you count, there are the frequency is two hertz. So in LGS, we get slow spike wave discharges of 1.5 to 2.5 hertz. So then, uh, Pictal EG, pictal EG when we are recording the activity during the seizure. So uh, according to the, to the uh, type of seizure, we get different types of pictal recording. So Dr. Rajay, only three, four slides are left. So, please, please carry on, please, please. So this is ictal recording of infantile spasm. So in infantile spasm, if when we are recording EEG during uh, spasm, this will show electro decremental response. So what is that? So here is the area where the child now had spasm. And before that, this EEG was abnormal. So at the time of spasm, this abnormal EEG activity, high voltage disappeared. There is a, a distorted wave, uh, superimposed by the beta. So this is called electro decremental response of infantile spasm. In myoclonic seizure, we get poly spike and wave pattern. So you can see poly spike and wave pattern. If it is case of generalized tonic seizure, we often get the fast high voltage beta activity like this. Case of generalized tonic clonic seizure. At the onset of seizure, during tonic phase, we have spikes, frequent spikes. During clonic phase, it is relatively so. We get a spike wave pattern. And after the seizure is over, the background don't return normal immediately. There is some depression of the background or the other background changes for some time. So this is showing it uh, the lysotonic tonic, tonic season. So with the start of the season, there is multiple spikes. And then during chronic phase, it slows down the spike wave pattern. And when the, there is end of season, there is background suppression. And later on, it becomes normal. So I uh, end my presentation here. So we have learned about the types of abnormalities, focal and generalized epileptic form and non-epileptic form. If you have any query, you may please ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chandakanda, ma'am. You uh, actually, uh, all delegates to note that as many EG you want to observe, this uh, picture is clear. Hoti hai. Actually, this is what you have to do abnormality. This is what you have to do in page. When EG is done, you have to do 100, 100, 200 pages. And you have to do it. You have to do it. Usually, we have a digital uh, thing. But uh, if you uh, are aware, like uh, sometimes in one page, it's very difficult to decide that it is normal or abnormal. So we go exactly, for a exactly. uh, soft uh, 
तो हम लोग डॉक्टर चंद्रकांत जी हम लोग ऑफलाइन है ऑफलाइन जब करेंगे ना तो फिर पूरा के पूरे तब हम लोग इसके क्विज करेंगे कि इसमें आपने पूरा के पूरा सिलसिले में सौ पेज में कहा नॉर्मलिटी देखा और उसको पकड़ना है तो वो अच्छा बस बहुत बढ़िया इसमें सारी चीजें एक 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 दो वर्ड अगर आप इसमें बताएं पेनाइटोपोल सिंड्रोम के बारे में वो एक इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट आई थिंक मैडम डॉक्टर रश्मि कुमार मैम है कि आई कैन नॉट सी मैम मैम को मैम रिक्वेस्ट कर रहा हूँ आपसे प्लीज मैम कुछ कमेंट करें और कुछ अपने अपने एक्सपीरियंसेस शेयर करें मैम की क्लिनिक होती है शाम को हो सकता है पेशेंट भी तो नहीं बिजी हो गए हाँ हो सकता है Uh, कोई बात नहीं ठीक है हम उनसे पहले से बता के रखेंगे सो so, आज का हमारा सेशन uh, कंप्लीट uh, हो रहा है तो हम लोग दो uh, आज दो लेक्चर सुने और कल बहुत ही बढ़िया uh, कल आपको रियल वीडियोस के साथ में ये चीज मिलने वाली है और डॉक्टर अनूप वर्मा का कल लेक्चर है और जो ईजी में आर्टिफेक्ट्स की बात होती है कि इनफैक्ट ई में जितनी प्रॉपर फाइंडिंग होती है लगभग यूजली आर्टिफैक्ट बहुत ज्यादा परेशान करते हैं तो उसके बारे में हम लोग कल चर्चा करेंगे और तब तक के लिए सबको बाय बाय थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर